Uh, thank you for tuning in. Today we have a special honor of, um, I'm going to have a, a good time of talking to a state representative, Washington state representative, Matt Shia, um, who had, we had the privilege of hosting him, uh, teaching our interns this week. He's been a friend of our church and personal uh, friend of mine. And uh, he has a powerful testimony. Um, he's been a state representative for over 10 years and six times he was reelected. And not only that, but he's also an attorney. He's a lawyer. Uh, he has a, a, his own business there in Spokane. And not only that, but he's a veteran. Uh, he served in the army. He was a captain uh, at the army. And God uses him today. He's a born-again believer, spirit-filled, who walks with God. And not only that, but leads people to Jesus, baptizes people at his uh, <laughs> bath, uh, bath tub, bath tub there it is. where people get saved and <laughs> he just baptizes them, so walks with God. And so, Matt, thank you so much for being with Hungry Gen, sharing this week. And uh, we just wanted to hear more about you. And uh, first of all, what did you talk about to the interns this week? I, I know it's a lot of topics. Uh, I talked about a lot of stuff, but it's an honor to be here myself. I just appreciate the ministry you have here. It's touching so many lives not just here in Tri-Cities and in Washington State, but around the world. It's amazing. Uh, and it's a real testament to the people that you have here. So I, I talked this week about America being a Christian nation. There's an idea out there that America is not a Christian nation. I went through all of the proof site, primary source documents and texts that conclusively show it is a Christian nation. We are clearly that the Mayflower Compact is what started it from the first people that mm -hmm. were setting foot in America to the Articles of Confederation of the United Colonies in 1643 where they said, we came here with one and the same aim. So all the colonies, we came here with one and the same aim, and that is to expand the kingdom of Jesus Christ. Those mm -hmm. are things that you don't get taught in school very often mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. That's very important to understand. And then also, uh, later, the Founding Fathers believed about Christianity and the fact that Congress actually did an investigation on it. Are we a Christian nation? Came to the conclusion, yes, we are at 33rd Congress. And oh. then in 1892, the United States Supreme Court ruled the same way. So. It is very clear that we are a Christian nation, and I think it's important to have that as a foundation because America is the greatest generator of mission missionaries, mm -hmm. missions. It's the greatest generator of funding for missions in the entire history of the world, and we need to continue to, to, to mm -hmm. be that and continue to be that, that city, that mm -hmm. light on a hill that God wants when to When I was in the Ukraine, this may sound funny, but I was taught that America is the great Babylon of <laughs> Book of Revelation. Revelation. I don't know where they got that stuff from, and uh, the only part that I had a hard time reconciling that is the Babylon in Book of Revelation was drunk with the blood of martyrs. And I'm thinking, I'm like, America is the one that sends the missionaries, supports the missionaries, and pretty much um, people who die, people don't die in America for the cause of Christ. I mean, some people can get persecuted and everything and stuff. So, and then when we came to the United States and started to learn the history of the United States and started to learn of, um, uh, the commitment to the Christian morals that America had. Do you see that this nation is drifting oh, of from course. its foundations? Uh, of course. We, we have drifted far from our foundations. And I think that as Christians, we need to understand that they're, they're, you know, evil takes many forms. Mm -hmm. It really does. And there is evil in America today. Mm -hmm. There is some. Mm -hmm. And that should spur us to action beyond the four walls of the church to get out there and to pray for people for healing, to, to pray for deliverance to get out there and preach the gospel of the kingdom to people in America, that America actually is a mission field. There's a lot mm -hmm. of people I've talked to in Ethiopia who believe America is a mission field. People wow. in Korea that believe America is a mission field. Wow. And it, it is a mission field. There, mm -hmm. are, there are folks out here that have never, in some cases, heard the gospel of Christ, or what they have heard is a perverted form of it or a perverted mm -hmm. message of it. Mm -hmm. And so we have a lot of work to do. And there, the great part is that this generation, this hungry generation, if you will, mm -hmm is ready to hear the truth, but a lot of times they're finding it in the wrong places on the internet. Instead, we can be that resource for them. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, I believe in that. I believe that the change, and I think you would agree, it doesn't just start with the government, it starts with, with the hearts of people. It has I to. I think church is the Holy Spirit, and we, the Christians, we can be the one to, because a lot of times we think if we re-elect elect a new president, from our party or a president that we like, that's when the change is going to happen. I always like to tell our church that the change doesn't start with the White House, it starts with the White Throne. You know, if we get things shifted in the spiritual realm, revival begins to break out. And the White House will reflect that. The, the Senate will reflect that. Because what's happening in the government is pretty much a lot of it is a reflection of what's happening in the hearts of people. Out of, out of an abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. And politics 
shows the state of the heart. Okay, it's not the other way around. It doesn't change the state of the heart. It shows the state of the wow. heart. And our politics today, a lot of people say, is very dirty, and, and to a great extent, it's dirty because a lot of Christians have said, "I don't want to have any reason to be involved in it." Mm -hmm. And yet, God, all the way back when Moses appointed seventy elders, called people to treat politics as a mission field. In fact, at that time, mm -hmm. Moses was praying. God came down with His Holy Spirit on those 70 elders, and that is in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. right? And that was when a government was being formed. Mm. And so I think in- Spirit-filled government. Spirit-filled government. Wow. That was the genius of the Founding Fathers was that the Temple of the Holy Spirit, the Body of the Believer, was the government of the United States of America. Presupposing two things. One, we were believers, and two, that we were actually showing up so Holy Spirit could mm -hmm. live through us. And there's a lot, there's a, there's a sentiment in America today that we should just be Christians in the church. Mm -hmm. Separation from church and state. Yeah, Christians <laughs> just on Sunday. Uh, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, guys that really knew about the Confessing Church during World War II and, and endured just unspeakable persecution, mm -hmm. understood that we got to be the Confessing Church 24-7 outside the four walls because that's where we're going to reach people. And there are so many hurting people that are out there. Mm -hmm. And to not hate people, but to view every person as being a potential of being that temple of the Holy Spirit, potential of being that kingdom of God here on earth and expanding that kingdom mm -hmm. and pushing back the evil ones. Do you, um, I know that when the church, uh, separation of the church and state um, started, it didn't start for what people claim it to be, where the church shouldn't no. stick their nose into the politics. What was the real reason for the separation of the church and state? Well, the modern, where it came from was a, a letter from the Danbury Baptist to Thomas Jefferson and Thomas Jefferson's response. The Supreme Court just quotes Thomas Jefferson's response. But the Danbury Baptist wrote Thomas Jefferson and said, hey, this new national government you guys are forming, are they going to get involved in matters of the church? In other words, are they going to prevent us from worshiping, mm -hmm. prevent us from planting churches, prevent us from living our Christianity beyond the four walls mm -hmm. of the church? Mm -hmm. Thomas Jefferson's like, absolutely not. Mm -hmm. There's a separation. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a separation to prevent churches from living beyond the four walls of the church. It was a separation to allow them mm -hmm. to live so, their Christianity. So the government the doesn't control the church, but the church lives out its potential. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. That's kind of puts things in perspective. I think that, I mean, <clears throat> Esther, Joseph, Daniel, all of these people, they were in the political arenas in the Old Testament, and God used them mightily to bring revival and, in fact, to shake the whole empire of yep. people. And I think we need that. We need that again. How did you feel a sense of calling? Because you treat politics as a, as a ministry. You yes. don't treat it as a... Because there's a difference between a political spirit that some people are possessed with and, and serving in the area of politics, the same way as you mentioned yesterday, the same way as in the church, you can serve at the church and you can be possessed with a religious spirit. And we know a lot of people in Christianity who have a religious spirit. In fact, it's a religious spirit that created this commotion that crucified Jesus. And, and yet we're all called to serve in the church. How do you distinguish that? And what helped you to come to that point of serving in the politics versus just being possessed with pol with political spirit, and what's the difference? Well, look, a, a political spirit and a religious spirit, like you said, crucified Jesus Christ. Mark 3, 6, as symbolized by the Pharisees, the religious spirit, mm -hmm. and the Herodians, the political spirit, crucified Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And so we've gotta be careful that things, it could be your theology, or your, your focus on theology, or your focus on miracles, or your focus on politics, or your focus on mm. you know, a specific denomination that you miss Christ because you're so focused on this stuff that's taking your eyes off of being in the presence of Jesus Christ, the mm -hmm. presence of the Holy Spirit. That is really fundamentally what, what, fundamentally what evil is. is trying to do is, is mm -hmm. get you off of where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And so you know, political spirit, pledging allegiance to a political party, and that's the end-all, be-all, or pledging allegiance to religious spirit to a specific denomination, uh, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. the end-all, be-all. Mm -hmm. Where's Christ in that? That's that's a man in the world. Okay. We need to keep focused on Jesus, keep mm -hmm. focused on his presence. If we stay there, the mm -hmm. spirit will unite us. It, it, it can't be divided when we're mm -hmm. there. And if the whole body of Christ is doing that, oh my goodness, the mm -hmm. world changes. Wow. History changes. Wow. And so you see politics as a as a mission field for you as a place to serve and minister how did you come about that well so uh i was after i came back from iraq i was praying lord what do you want me to do and i was led into politics and i gotta tell you i didn't necessarily want to want to get into it because i kind of knew a little bit about it mm -hmm. uh, but the lord was very clear and it was a very clear path for me mm -hmm. and has allowed me now to be able to speak 
to people all over the country and now all over the world about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, about the power of Holy Spirit, about just the, the peace and joy and righteousness that comes with Holy uh -huh. Spirit, and and also speak that into the halls of government, mm -hmm. and and allow some people who may be kind of on the fence or maybe maybe in a in a compromised position uh -huh. to hear it. And I can't tell you how many times I've had people come up to me very quietly, very privately. Hey, can you tell me more about Jesus? That's what uh -huh. the body of Christ men should be doing, and it shouldn't uh -huh. be just politics. We should be doing this, whether you're in business, mm -hmm. you're a teacher, every, every area of our lives, That's we good. should be touching folks. That's good. That's yeah. good. How did you, um, how did you come about the Lord? How did you, I know you grew up Catholic, but um, how did you discover Jesus as your personal Savior? So I served in Bosnia in 2000. Uh, I was walking up to a mass grave, and this is five years after the original war in Bosnia. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were coming back to their homes for the first time, and they were finding mass graves, some quite literally in their own front yards. And so I'm walking up to a mass grave and there were skeletons surrounding it. Some were still bound with wire. Some wow. of the skulls still had wow. uh, blindfolds on. And I saw a lady and she was sitting on top of three bodies and she's brushing in the dirt. She picks a bullet out of the ground and says, oh, there it is. I said, could you explain to me what you're doing? And she said, well, I'm, they used to make them kneel at the side of the grave. They would shoot them in the back of the head and they would fall on their own bullets. So I'm matching the bullet to the body. And then because wow. Adrena River wow. Wolves kept such mm -hmm. meticulous records to the rifle, mm -hmm and then to the person who owns the rifle we're prosecuting for war crimes. And mm -hmm. right at that moment, God just hit me right between the eyes that if there was that kind of evil in the world, there had to be the opposite and good, and I wanted to find it. Wow. About a year and a half later, I gave my life to Christ. Within two weeks, my life was right side up, and he has been sending me down a road that has been just quite a wondrous journey. It really has. And not long ago, God baptized you in the Holy Spirit. He'll do with the Holy Spirit, yeah. and, uh, and you're not ashamed about Jesus. You're bold yeah. everywhere you are. That's so encouraging. Um, you know, you mentioned being in Bosnia, being in Iraq, and you went to serve there. And last year, you had a chance to travel overseas on a mission trip. I did. And you mentioned something that's sad and funny at the same time uh, to me, that it was um, kind of different for you to go overseas, not to kill people, but to save them. I mean, you didn't directly yeah. go killing people, but people under your, people who you were responsible for were fulfilling certain assignments. And so tell me a little bit more about that feeling and how you feel like God is leading you now into the missions overseas as well. It was really profound that, you know, I went overseas the first two times and we trained and we prepared. And in some cases we killed people. Mm -hmm. And, and then going overseas this next time, I went to Ethiopia where we're literally going into a place that two days before we got there, there was a gun battle, and I, ha I don't have any weapons, and the Lord, so complete reliance on the Lord, mm -hmm. and the Lord is bringing me there so that he can save people through me. That is, it's, it's profound. Wow. I still can't really get my head around it. Wow. And what God did there, because they had been two warring Christian tribes, and they told us that they were gonna continue the war on Monday mm -hmm. as soon as we left. And instead, as we're driving out, they declare the first peace in 10 years. That is the power That's of the Holy Spirit and the power That's of God. That's incredible. Wow. So um, I had this question, and a lot of people ask me that question, and I had it younger, and I know that you've talked to interns about it. Um, does God, what is the difference between killing and murder? So it's, it's very simple that we are not supposed to take innocent, innocent human life. That's innocent according to God's standards. Uh, Self-defense, um, defending the temple of the Holy Spirit. There were guards in the Old Testament that mm. stood around the temple of the Holy Spirit for a reason. Um, at that time, it was the temple of the Spirit of God mm -hmm. with the Ark of the Covenant and all that with the mercy seat. Mm -hmm. Today, defending the temple of the Holy Spirit, self-defense, that is justified, very clearly justified. In fact, uh, Jesus in Luke 22 says, take a sword. And they said, hey, we got two, which means they already had the swords there with them. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't saying get rid of them. The other part is, that, and I think it's very interesting, is when you talk about offensive war, okay, and that's where a lot of people get very confused. And, and the way I say it is this, that peace should be the rule and war should be the exception always. Okay. But if we're doing our job as Christians, war isn't gonna happen. If we're living out our Christianity beyond the four walls of the church, there isn't the rise of Germany in World War II. There isn't the rise of Stalin. There isn't the rise of Mao Zedong. There's the rise of Christian pastors, ministers, wow. evangelists, teachers, wow. prophets, mm -hmm. apostles, mm -hmm. and going out into the world mm -hmm. and 
there's not going to be war. And so I think that that should spur us on. War, sh war happens because we are not living out our full potential as Christians. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in the world. You had the Serbs who were an ostensibly Christian country, orthodox, but an ostensibly Christian country. Mm -hmm. Horrific things happened. And these two warring Christian tribes I just mentioned in Ethiopia. What? I mean, what about Matthew 18? How are you warring? You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be happening if we are living out our Christianity beyond four walls of church. And if we truly actually walk into what God has told us that the Spirit is not just words, it's power. Mm -hmm. And that mm -hmm. power can bring peace anywhere in the world at any time. It doesn't mm -hmm. depend on elections. It doesn't mm -hmm. depend on circumstances here. It depends on the will of God mm -hmm. and His faithful people walking it out here on the earth. Plus, I think that as Christians, our main yeah. call is to a spiritual warfare. It is. And that spiritual warfare, it brings change um, and it brings blessing to people because I, I always like to say natural war removes evil, out, evil people out of the world. Spiritual war removes evil out of the people. Yeah. You know, and sometimes there are cases where evil people, they, they must be removed. And so that's what the law enforcement and the, uh, and the army and those guys, they do their job. And so, but this, the church is responsible. And I like what you said, if we would do our job, there would be less war in this world. And so um, any final thoughts that you will have for our viewers about the, what do you see this country is headed to? I think that we are headed to a tremendous move of God very soon. Wow. And I think that we do need to be doing that spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. It's not just a matter of, you know, the repentance part of it and mm -hmm. constantly being clean before the Lord, but it's actually walking into it, get it going beyond the cross mm -hmm. to where we are raised, as Ephesians 2.5 mm -hmm. says, with Christ and abiding with Him. And I think if we do that, we're going to see some amazing things happen. And that spiritual warfare, we need to take that very seriously, mm -hmm. that what is manifested in heaven manifested is manifested on earth. On earth. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Well, thank you guys for watching. Till next time.